Everybody. I didn't even have to wake up early this morning, just woke up at a regular time and I'm visiting somewhere very local to me. This is kind of Shoreham Harbour. It's a bit complicated. Shoreham Harbour spans quite a few places. It goes all the way from Hove to Portslade to Southwick, Fishers Gate and Shoreham by Sea. I live in Shoreham by Sea and I've literally just parked across from the harbour and walk through um, where there's a lock so that the, uh, the large boats can come through. However, if you want to drive here, you have to go a few miles that way, all the way to Hove, uh, near Hove Lawns, and then come back on yourself. And I would say you park at Carrots Cafe. Otherwise, Shoreham by foot or by bike. Much easier, much easier. And one of the reasons why I'm here is because I think I'm getting bored of revisiting the same old locations as probably most of you are, especially recently because I like travelling and I haven't been abroad for the last two years and there's no denying that exploring and visiting new novel places makes you a creative person. So the fact that I haven't been anywhere new in the last two years is a bit depressing. I am fortunate to live in a very nice place. There is a lot to photograph here in Brighton and generally the South Downs, so I'm com coming across as a bit whingy, but I think everybody has the potential to get bored no matter what their surroundings. People that live in Vegas are probably bored. People that live in Los Angeles are bored. People that live in Australia are probably bored of their surroundings. Everybody gets bored of their surroundings. Uh, so yeah, I'm complaining, but I think uh, photographically that's one of the reasons why I've started to connect with as many local landscape photographers as possible because one, you get to meet new people, two, you get to go out with them, and then three, they've probably been to places you haven't been or even just uh, seen the same locations in a different way and therefore an old revisited location can become something new. Now, if you followed my channel for a long time, then you might recognise some of these backgrounds. This was actually one of the locations of one of my first videos, probably four or five years ago. I was making a video about uh, wire wool spinning. Not a very good video. It was a long time ago, how far I have come. I didn't even have the confidence to talk to the camera, tell you viewers what the video is about. It's rubbish. I mean. The photographs that I got from that were very good, but in terms of a video that anybody would want to watch, it's useless because you didn't even find out how to photograph wire wall spinning. Uh, but you've got to start somewhere, I guess. Practice makes perfect. I've made a lot of videos, they're not all good, but I've left them on my YouTube channel so that you can see the progression, hopefully. And yeah, it takes a lot of guts to start pointing the camera at yourself and talking for the first time. But if you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel, or even just making videos for social media, just do it. And if you're not happy with it, delete the video. Nobody ever even knew you were trying to make a video. So yeah, I just thought I'd share that about this location. It all started here. Let me show you what we're photographing today. I am sinking. So if you're gonna come here, you definitely need to bring wellies. And you need to come here at low tide if you're gonna shoot the composition that I am today. So let me help you get your bearings. At the moment, this wall, this wall here is the Eastern Harbour entrance wall. On the other side of that wall is where all the boats come into Shoreham Harbour. I've been here before, and essentially what we're shooting today are sea defences. I believe that these sea defences that are made of concrete are called petropods. Here you go, here are the petropods. Now they need a bit more light on them to make them really sing. 
I wasn't expecting so much cloud today. I was expecting 20% low cloud. That was the prediction. Now, even if I don't get any shots today, this is about recce because I came here a very, very long time ago, didn't take a note of the tides. If it were to be a clear day, the sun is probably going to end up in the shot, which is what I wanted. I was going to get the sun just poking up above the horizon. Um, but if you want just this with side lighting, you're probably going to have to come here in the summer. So let me tell you what's happening here. This is almost low tide. If you're thinking about coming here, you need the tide to be around two meters. Okay, and then if you can get that to clash with sunrise or sunset, you're in luck. Now, because I'm backlit, exactly the same as my scene, you can see that this is a very dark situation. So I think I'm going to have to bracket the images. Because I travelled really light today, I've literally brought out one camera and one lens. So I'm filming on my ESR 24 to 105, and I brought some magnetic NDs so that I can do some long exposures of this. But what that does mean is, because I've got an overcast sky, I'm not going to be able to just get this in one shot, I don't think. So what I'll do is, I'll do a long exposure for the foreground and then a long exposure for the sky and I'll probably have to merge the two. And previously I made this black and white because I had a bit of a miserable sky, but let's see. Anyway, so this is the scene, these are the petropods. I'm on a sandy beach, but immediately underneath the tripod there's quite a lot of seaweed and stuff, so I don't think that's going to make for an attractive foreground. So. For that reason, I'm probably going to punch in a bit, cut out most of the beach, maybe all of the beach, and just have water in the foreground. A very minimal composition. I know I've got a massive habit of just going ahead and slapping on an ND filter, so I'm going to take some non-long exposures, regular exposures, um, because actually the quality of the light is quite nice, so I'll take some of those, then I'm going to put on a 10 stop, maybe put on a 6 stop as well, 16 stops, and then see how this looks. Right. Here are some images. The sun's just kicking off over Brighton there, look at that. That's not going to help this scene, but if you want to see how the sun relates to the scene, there you go. Okay, I'm doing a bit of time travel again. I'm back, back at the same location. The conditions are not perfect, but they are better. It's low tide again, and the sun is literally just poking up above the clouds. So I'm going to set the camera up, see if I can get some better shots than last time. Do you like it when I do a bit of time travel? Essentially I'm making a video, it's not going to plan, so I just think, sod it, I'll come back. And then the future me comes into this video and hopefully you can see what this location should look like in better conditions. Yeah, let me know what you think. Anyway, back to the younger me. I'm about to explore further down the beach, show you another location, which I'll probably return to in the future. <laughs> That is not the end of this location though. I'm going to walk this way a bit past Carrots Cafe and there is something called the Hot Pipes, which I believe is an old exhaust from the Shore and Power Station. I think it used to take hot water out into the ocean to get rid of some of the excess heat. I don't know if this is true or not. Um, but essentially that creates really good currents and for that reason a lot of people surf around them. But that's not what I'm going to be doing today. I'm not surfing. It's a good photographic subject. You've got these four columns sticking out. Let's just go and check on the tide and see where it's at.
Right, so these are the hot pipes. You've got four poles there, and then you've got two poles quite a bit further in, just to show you where these gates are. Now essentially, low tide, this composition does not work at all. It's too dark, too heavy. But if you come here, I'm not gonna say high tide strictly, I think it's somewhere between medium and high tide. Then you'll get some photographs that look a bit like this. This is an image I took maybe five years ago. I think it can be improved upon. I would definitely be coming back, now that I remember, medium to high tide. But it's definitely not low tide. Sorry if it's a bit windy, but I'm back. I'm back at the hot pipes in Shoreham by Sea. Another time travel video, but the conditions here are amazing. The sun has yet to come up. I've got like a medium tide. The tide, I think, is actually going back out again, but it's coming right up to my camera. And the colours of the sky, oh man. Just getting so excited. The most important thing about this image is symmetry because the poles are so close to one another. If I get that wrong, the whole image is off. Oh, nice! Right, so that is it for today's video. If you also are struggling with a bit of motivation, you're bored of photographing the same locations, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.